show on the studio as well. John Town TV, John Town TV and the John Factory in association with the Bandra Show. And friends, we're joined with Martin Kelly today. He's from a brand new political party. Check this, a brand new political party in the north of Ireland called Gopher Martin. Sista. Sista. C-A-S-T-A. Sista. Sista. First of all, thanks for coming in the studio, Martin. No problem at all. How are you keeping? Not too bad, not too bad. From my last time, well, never anyway. It's been a bit busy, I've been busy enough during the week, so... Well, busy with the boxes? Busy making drum boxes as a job, busy campaigning as a politician by evening, I'm a bit like Batman, you know. How, <laughs> how does that feel, for the first time, obviously? How, how does it feel? Is it surreal, you right? You know, you're right, electioneering, the campaigning for it. campaigning, but you're dealing with the stigma of... It's, it's drugs, you know, so people are saying, oh, the cameras, it's drugs, and you're dealing with a lot of people in the streets saying things like, you know, you're trying to legalise drugs, and you're, you're, it's a stigma that's stuck with it, so you're trying to get rid of that. Well, hold on, hold on, we, we didn't explain who CISTA is, so ah. to, to our audience, if you can explain just who, who are you? It's a group where, tr we call cannabis to see for an alcohol, we're aiming for a, a royal commission into the... Uh, legislation surrounding drugs policy in the UK. Um, basically, it's old, it's outdated, and it criminalises a lot of people for their preferences. Not to use mainstream drugs like uh, morphine or opiates or lidocaine or cocaine or opiate-based drugs. We prefer more people would prefer to use marijuana-based drugs, you know. Um, but people are criminalised for that choice, um, and people even made aware that the likes of Glaxo, Kleinsmith, and other big pharmaceutical companies are just patenting Class A drugs and feeding them to you. Um, whereas this is an organic drug that people should be entitled to f freely to treat themselves with and grow themselves free of charge that's been suppressed for those medical companies. Um, and we're trying to bring stuff like that forward and say them, look, this guy's come to the stage now where we need to actually start making the money for the economy and, and out of it. Um, a, push with the Royal, a, a push with the Royal Commission is going to force the Queen to sort of look at the petitions, look at the evidence, look at the medical benefits. And look at the commercial value and things like that. So I want to push for it. I have nothing really to lose on face value, but a lot of people do. So it's a controversial group, but uh, and it's best. I mean, people are calling so a lot of controversy. Um, but realistically, I mean, there's not a person who's in a family somewhere who's not affected by drugs. Yeah. So we need to have a look at it in a serious way. People are people are criminalised and pushed aside, and it, it only creates more problems. And it, it needs to be addressed rather than regressed. You know. So you you reckon it's safer than say a prescribed medicine? Absolutely. I mean, doctors in the last in the last well in the last year, it's, there's been a group in America called Here. They're a government funded, um, not so much charity but a science institute, solely for looking into the cannabis, um, looking into the scientific side of the cannabis. In terms of alcohol, it's as we know from channel four there, it's 114 times safer than alcohol, but it's also safer than the likes of caffeine, it's safer than taurine, which is in your Red Bull, it's safer than paracetamol, even aspirin. You know, they're, they're ranked as 10 times higher than cannabis. There's never been a single death or overdose from cannabis. Mm. Um, and there's, it, it actually fights the four main types of ca ca cancer that would cure kill people. So, and it actively fights them and only those cancer cells. So we need to get this information publicised and brought to light rather than suppressed and pushed aside as a drug problem, you know. Right. I mean the war on drugs never I never seen a poppy burn once, you know, in fact the war on drugs actually protected all the drugs because they need the poppies. The poppies are for the medical companies. You know. Is that in, in Afghanistan and, and all that absolutely I mean you don't think about it, but every epidural, every time there's a child born in this country, we use cocaine, we use lidocaine, we use novocaine for analysis. We use these things even though they say that we're taking them and we're getting rid of it. The, our governments are actually moving into these countries and taking them for themselves, you know. And they're taking the poppies and they're using them for their own opiate industry here. And we don't, we, we, we never make an eye out because it's patented, it's all behind paperwork, it's behind big wigs and fat cats, you know. And, and, it's, and it's actually legal. It's actually legal because it's patented, you know, it's been manufactured to a way where, you know, it's not a big plant anymore, it's a wee tablet and we've made that and that's our patent and you have to pay us. And the government's taking loans out and until the loans are paid off, they have to make the people keep taking the things. I mean, the Radium Trust, the Cancer Trust, the Radium Trust in 1939 took out a £10 million loan. Um, in 1939, £10 million was equivalent to about... What a serious money. Serious time. But that was to, for radiation tests and things like that. Uh, even to this day, 
they're still paying that loan back and it's, it's all part of the big they call it conspiracy if you want but it's a financial way of building the drug world you know the likes of Glaxo Klein Smith and Willard that answer for um, and the if people use cannabis would be 40% of the medicine in the cupboard could be done away with you know is that right? that's about that's an average statistic that's been come up with this care group as well you mean painkillers are out the window and um, beta blockers are out the window sleeping tablets are out the window nerve tablets are out the window the, the, the benefits from cannabis between your pineal gland and the receptors in your brain are absolutely phenomenal right? absolutely so, and it's an age-old plant, really, isn't it? Age-old plant, but a lot of people think, oh, you get a stoned as hell, and you'll, get, you'll, you'll, you'll be grand, you'll be fine. It's not even the agent that gets you stoned in the, the cannabis that's helping you. It's the CBDs. Yeah. There's actually a lot of all different. Um, there's cannabinoids, there's THCs, there's tetrahydrocannabinoids, there's cannabinoid acids. They all have different parts of effect on your nervous system, on your, your pains, on your head, on your electrolytes, and your receptors, and serotonin levels. They all benefit you rather than affect you. Um, and they're all organic, so they're all something you can grow yourself, which means the big companies can't patent, and that's where oh. the big rigmarole comes into it. I don't know if you've noticed lately in the media they're calling cannabis skunk weed. Right. It's just something that's been, it's come out of the blue. Weed always seems to be skunk, and it's real dangerous and detrimental to health and stuff. Skunk weed, funny enough, you can't patent. You know, anybody can grow skunk weed, and it will be human right to grow it. But if you got the likes of the block resin or the hashes, they call it. It's processed and whatnot. So the way we're looking at it, you may have seen Richard Branson on Channel 4. It's more likely, it seems to me, that it's going to go to the way of virgin cannabis, you know, virgin on the shelf, that, that sort of way, rather than be able for a body to legally grow. What do you want to give Richard a big razor? Razor Richard. <laughs> razor <laughs> Richard Branson. And uh, we know one of his good mates. Yes, indeed. Uh, the, the tall man, what do you call it? Uh, Peter. Mm. Tom. Tom. Tubular Bells, Tom. Oh, Tom Oldfield. Newman. Michael, Tom. Michael, Tom. Michael Newman. Oldfield, Tom Newman. So we can cut that bit out. Tom Newman. <laughs> big Richard Bronson's made a big razor to Tom Newman. And he was in the band the show previously. And by the way, I think it's getting a bit hot in here, lads, you know. It is. You know where you crack yourself. There you go. Look at that there. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. Um, I've missed my shout out here tonight, friends. Just because we're running late. Oh. Uh, this man got the trend in here. So big shout out to all the Twitter followers. Follow at Bonker Show and at Tony Razor. And also, everybody, thanks for all the likes and shares on the Facebook channel, The Bonker Show. So sorry about that, Martin. So I just had to do that bit, you know. The, 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 the viewers expect it. They expect it, you know. But you're very knowledgeable on, on the subject of cannabis. I've never heard a, a more knowledgeable... I've never had a conversation like this before with somebody who knows so much. I mean, there's a lot of people, if you mean hear the people sound like, I'm feeling it's in the parks and stuff. Uh, it's going to take some, it's going to take a lot of education before it moves forward. It's not just, it's not as simple as there's drugs, everybody's free to use, you know, there has to be regulation, there has to be a smart approach to it. Like, so it takes a bit of learning and I'm just glad that I'm able to do the learning whilst I'm able to medicate. Yeah, you're sure, but you, you actually need it as medication, don't you? I well, that's that, that epileptic. I've started taking really bad fits four, four and a half years ago. Um, and the doctors put me on Valium and Apilum and different ASTs to balance the receptors. I mean, once you get too, too much fire in here, you'll have a fit. Um, but with cannabis, I find using the CBD, that's one of the types of cannabis in it, one of the types of the active ingredients, as we call it. It's called cannabinoids. Um, they suppress the pineal, around the pineal, pineal gland where your nerves are. They're relaxing the suppressant and more of a sedative. So you feel relaxed and you feel comfortable, but you're not sedated, you're not eating, you're sorry, you're not convulsed. Um, I use that on a daily basis. Does a guarantee for me that I can go about my daily, you know, I can go about my daily routine, I can go to work, I can deal with the child, I can make my drums, or I can do my campaigning. Whereas without it, I would be on my volume and I'd be sitting like that and then uh, sleeping at 12 o'clock in the day and I'd wake up not knowing what day it is and forgetting to wake me up. That's how I'd pop oh, you know, those sort of things. Like, and and, and uh, have, have your, uh, you, you know, your, your, your attacks, have they subsided? Never once have I took an attack, so never Since once. you started cannabis? Yeah, never once. Um, I was off cannabis whenever the big attacks started happening, um, partying and sort of staying off cannabis and actually jealous. I was, I was more looking after myself and doing gym stuff, but a wee bit of stress came along and both the legs out. And like that story, I kept happening about three or four times within a small time frame, you know. Well, can you tell me how then this political party has started, or you know, 
The guy who used to own Beagle, his name is Paul Birch. Um, he used to be, well, he took to drinking an awful lot whenever he found, he found his fortune. Um, but he realised he just he didn't like who he had become. You know, he found, and he started smoking. And he much preferred to have a smoke than to have a drink. Right. Um, but he thought, you know, why is this not, you know, why is it not legal? I mean, how can they be sitting having a drink and not be legal? So he took it on to, to, to go to push for the Royal Commission. He's invested £100,000 of in his own mummy and to his sister um, so that we can get as much, enough candidates to try and push for at least 1 or 2% um, of the entire votes. And those will force them going to open up a Royal Commission. Um, a home parliament in Northern Ireland may do the same, have the same fact within the Northern Ireland country. And the many councillors are standing, or, or you know, the many Ar- candidates are standing? Northern Ireland, we've got four. We've got, um, there's myself, there's Neil Payne, Barry Brown and Glenn Donnelly. Um, Glenn is banger, Neil is, sorry, Neil's banger, Glenn's, Glenn's banger, sorry, Neil is, I need to be more demographic, wouldn't I? <laughs> I don't know more demographic, demographic because the boy Brown's Oma, sorry, boy Brown's Oma, Neil's in Bangor, and the other consists, I don't know where he's from, I'm not too sure where he's from, but it's, he's doing a very good job. <laughs> now, <laughs> yeah, are, are they, yeah. are, 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 is the sister party going to be in England as well? It's or? already up and down England, we've got a great stance in, there's 138 candidates throughout the UK, four in Northern Ireland, we entitled us the live broadcast there, it's on UTV, it's on UTV player now, um, and it, it, give, it give us a 10 o'clock slot there on UTV, um, and that got our point across, basically saying that we're pushing for the Royal Commission, it just needs to be addressed on that, if you think about it, everybody's affected by drugs. And then, it, I mean, it, in certain states in America, and it seems to be spreading, yeah, that they're legalising it. Absolutely. You know, I mean, Colorado, Colorado sort of started it, um, Washington's legalising it on a federal basis there now. They're all feeling the benefits from it now. There was nine billion pound, nine billion dollars, sorry, extra in Colorado's funds last year. Nine billion. They, they didn't know what to do with it, they didn't know where to go to give it back to. They'd already given enough back and then took enough for their own pockets. So it's, it's just supposed to show that there's a lot of money that can be brought in from it. We're trying to use the same structure as here. I mean, there's, we've already put forward or proposed for um, who grows what, who licenses what, who bees where, who gets to do what. I mean, is there will be restrictions on how much each man can do? We put thing, we put proposals in for that as to what and where it happens or why it happens. And you have proper mandate as well. Absolutely. As well. I mean, everything's done. I mean, it's, we're not going to say, right, you can grow weed, you can grow weed, and everybody grow weed, you can grow 100 kilos and all that. It's not, it's not going to be like that. I mean, grow a small portion of mine, but if you're drinking iron, there's a truckload of weed, I mean, you're obviously going to be answer a little bit of um, Things need to be kept within reason, things need to be looked at. Just because I, I, I don't know, a ways away from the law. I mean, the law and legislation are all that wouldn't be dated. Legislation in this country is uh, joke enough as it is. We're not going to that one. That's, well, that's another show, isn't it? Yeah. You know, <laughs> normally politicians aren't allowed in the banter show, but you're, you're here on a you're here on a, on a double banter type of scenario. Because we're we're here to have a look at our drum batches as well. They don't two guests in one. So there you two guests in one. Where would you get it? And uh, with Ian Paisley, with even a comedian who brought his own audience. So, <laughs> you know, you know, imagine a comedian bringing his own audience. How, how's about that? Only on the Bomber Show. Sounds more like a politician. <laughs> <laughs> he was good. He, was, he could, that guy could be a politician. Yeah. William, yeah, William Callahan. Brilliant, brilliant crack. Uh, so, you, you, you've actually informed me. You know, you, see, you learn something new every day. You're, you're actually learning me more. That, you know, I, I, to me, cannabis. It's, because it's, it's, it's been kept in the, the back row for a long, long time. There's a lot of people who don't know this. Um, and what they've been saying for years is it's a legal drug, it's a legal drug. And that's where the stigma is related to it. I mean, I, I personally, when I told my family and friends, my girlfriend's family, when I was involved in this group, the stigma related to it's caused friction on it. I mean, that there's, oh, that's drugs. So what did you want? Oh, you by a case of scenario. A lot of that with it. But I mean, if it was run about full of value when I was taking the sleepers all the time, He's a junkie and stuff like that too, you know. But that's what I'm supposed to say. That's what the doctor's telling me to say. So I had to get rid of this thing. I had to. I'll do well. That's unbelievable. It's, it's an amazing story you're telling. It's not a story, but it's your story, you know. Ah, well, I'm, well it's, it's quite amazing. You've, you've uh, one in four people um, would be using cannabis in this country. Well, one in four will have used or come into contact and will have will, will be using on a regular sort of basis. 
Did you watch Paxman on BBC Two or was it on Channel Four? I think he, Jeremy Paxman. Jeremy Paxman and John Snow was it? Yeah, John Snow. John Snow. Uh, he got he got wiped anyway. Listen, friends, <laughs> we're, we're going to take a short break and then we'll go back here more bond with Martin and Kelly. Martin, this is interesting. Good <laughs> on. Back soon, friends. <laughs> friends and welcome back to the studio. Razor for sister. Razor. So uh, we, 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 got, we got educated about, about the, the cannabis plant and its uses earlier on and its health benefits. Very interesting Martin. You, you've really learned me a lot about you know because I'm the same I would have thought you know, you know that type of thing you know. Yeah. But anyway let's talk about K, K, K Holmes. K Holmes. Let's talk about K Holmes here. K -Holmes. Now, what is a K Holmes? K home drum is this one I've brought along with me. This is the K home drum here. Uh, Check this out, friends. Check it out. This is a wooden drum box. A wooden drum box. And this is seeing a lot of popularity now amongst young people and young musicians. Basically, it's a drum in a box. You've got the traditional drum sounds. So you've got your bass, right? And then you've got your high drums. Here's right. your it's a bit like one of the bongos or congos sitting over there, and then we adjust. So we've got an adjustable snare. Like a snare it's, it's a snare sound that adds to it. So basically, basically, then we get into a few different sounds of the drum. It allows then our drummers from now to go out onto the street to do a bit of busking to be more. As you see, when you're walking down the street and you see a guitarist standing and singing, it's all sort of the same drum down sort of sound. Now you think a lot of young ones are going out and you hear drum in the background of it. And you actually make these? We make them in there in Port of Art, uh, up local. Uh, we're inspired, I went to Scotland, met my brother's band, um, and found that they used one of those for the bus um, And the attack of was brilliant. I mean, it adds the texture, the tones, the sounds when, when you're playing live, um, and as an acoustic too for whenever you're playing with an acoustic guitar in a band for, or in a bar for a small intimate gig. It, it, it adds great value and great texture to the music as well. So in terms of in terms of usability and things like that, we find that there's just a market for them since they're open, you know. And there's another use for it as well. There's many uses for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a seat, because you sit on it to play it. Absolutely. I mean, you sit on it to play it. Um, you can take it to concerts with you. I took that one to many concerts. It's been This one? That one has been in many fields, um, all through the night, I've seen many things. <laughs> I'm, glad, seen I'm glad she can't talk. <laughs> she would get me in trouble. Well, I'll tell you what, there's plenty of varnish on it, so... Uh, there, for there, I mean, it's got the same varnish and things, it's polyurethane sealed, um, so that I mean, you've got your ability there, you'll not break that. It's more like yacht varnish. Yacht varnish, it's exactly what it is. It's, so it's sealed, you can take a good batter and a good feet. Um, traditionally, they were, they, were, they were made with a thinner plywood at the front, and they were made a wee bit weaker with strings. But we've revamped them, we make them customised, people have them with their own specific graphics or logos or band logos or pub logos on them. But what we've done is we added this adjustable, adjustability on it. Um, traditionally it's a, 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 it's a flamenco um, instrument um, and it would be more Peruvian, it's Peruvian orientated. Oh. Um, and it would just be two strings down the front, but we've put in snare wires right into it. So a full set of snare? Oh, there's a full set of oh, yeah. power snares in there that you can adjust on and off. So Excellent. It's, it's so it gives all, it gives you, you've got three different tones or three different sounds with it, and, and then the back holes there. Um, traditionally, the sound you, holes. Traditionally, you just have one around about that size here. Right. But because we have, I'm right handed, so this is where I have to know, I've customised those holes myself. A lot of customers would have their own customisation ideas as well. So that's, that's actually your own... That's my own design. That's your own, but that's your personal one? That's my own personal one. All customers will have their own design ideas and they'll come to me and say, this is what I want, that's what I'll do. We'll do it for friends and we'll produce what they want. And you can even, friends, love that. You can sit there having it. How good is that? <laughs> huh? You can even put your shades on it. Uh, if you're just trying to pay on it. Just, I don't know, if you could two pages up, don't worry about it. It's even more than shades. Uh, well, there. Only the band are so friends. The red band. It's, uh, there's another, it's, it's well made, I have to say. Because it's pretty strong play, what isn't it? The, uh, top, the top's real, what is it? Uh, but it's, just, it's an oak, it's an oak veneer, oak there on the sides, and then that's a laminated oak play. It's been compressed for strength for uh, 
reactivity at the back of it. You can feel the yoke at the top, can't you? Yeah, on the bottom, the weight. Uh, well, that particular one's that's like for recording purposes. I mean, if you're recording, you want a good solid oak. Um, you want a good solid wood on it. I mean, you can build an outfit if you want. And, so, and is this ordinary just play? It's ordinary play to the point of uh, it was play. We compressed it and laminated it so that it's twice as thin as it should be. Wow. It gives a good reactivity to it, you know. So when people hit it, makes it more durable as well. Makes it more durable. If, if it's thinner, when people hit it, eventually it'll split down the middle. So we go for the thicker wood, but then compress it to make it harder. And then, what are you cool? There you go. This man's a main of information here. Main we're getting, of information. We're getting learned about everything, including <laughs> Cisco to drum boxes. Only in the bond of show, friends. Um, <laughs> My big shout out to Matthew T, Big Phil, Mrs. Mrs. Phil on the way, Corrine Cohen, all my usual friends, Ollie Brecht, Jeff, Jeff Mueller. So big shout out to all my Twitter friends, all my Facebook friends. But I'll tell you what we're going to do. Is there any chance you could maybe show us how this works? Do a bit of a gig if I get my main man Peter in. Don't see why not. We'll give it a quick beat. Ah, you want a quick riddle? Right, friends. I'm going to I'm going to ask my good friend Peter. Peter McAnulty from the Jammin' Factory, welcome. McAnulty, Mac Mac welcome to the Banter Show. McAnulty. McAnulty. So there you go, we're going to get a demonstration. Yeah. You've got a room there, Marty, on the floor. Yeah. Go, McAnulty, go. Please, go, McAnulty. Hi. 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 H
my trampoline on the ground. There's trampoline on the ground. <laughs> I've got to kick out my trampoline, I've got a tambourine on the ground. So I would be having the symbols from the tambourine and sometimes these keep that obscured. They're very DIY drum, but they're still very effective. I mean, I can get the sound. You can get a sound even with kebab obscured. Absolutely. So That's unbelievable. Do you, do you remember in school whenever the drummer was the cool guy? Because he got to play with the drums, you know? There was only one drum kit between the Everybody can have a drum now. Every student can sit on them and things like that. And it, it's very good. I mean, music's music based on rhythm and timing. And if most of the kids now could learn their timing and rhythm, it's half the battle will be won, you know. Well, as you said, you're not a drum player, but you played that, you know, pretty good along there. Well, you know, ah, it was very easy to pick up. I mean, I'm not, I'm not doing this. I'm not like an octopus and things like that. It's very basic, but it's very, very effective. You know, for, for the young people to get into it. It's very good for therapy purposes as well. You know, but. Young children with behavioural problems and things like that. Because they take the music then, obviously, don't they? They take the music and the, the, I think the expression of you know beating away with your hands gets a lot of anger and things like that. I would they use them for therapy groups and things like that. Very know? good. Yeah. Very good. I'm, 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 I'm absolute main of information this man is, <laughs> friends. And I'll tell you what, uh, well, you'll have to come back again and, and tell us how you get on in the elections, right? Oh dear, well, as long as you get your, vote, you get your votes in this election. Right? Oh. There you go. <laughs> so vote for sister. Martin's running. Well, Martin, I tell you what, I wish you the best. Yeah, because it, 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 takes a, it, takes a lot of, it takes a lot of guts to, to go out and do what you're doing there, really, uh, isn't it? It's, it's, not, it's not so much guts as me, as long as you just get over the stigma. If it's not something I ever accept it, so if we can get over that stigma, we can move on and start to progress, you know. Um, and and the, other, the head of the party and the other candidates, I mean, they're all, they're all quite knowledgeable people, really, aren't they? Well, they're all very, I mean, they're all very highly respectable people. They're, you know, it's, it's not like we're, we're just running around the states picking up people with 10 signatures and getting them to do it. What we're doing is, I mean, everybody's being scrutinised, everybody's being looked at to say, you know, I, are, are, are you going to take it in the right direction, you know, and, and are you, is it a professional level that you're doing or not? I mean, everybody's got a professional adjective to it or a reason behind it or a grade and as long as there's one person not alone then we all should be looking at it you know very good very good well there you yeah there you have it friends basically um so if you have any shout outs you want to get to, to i'll shout out for the guy next door because you forgot him um paul, paul osborne and your and fm razor <laughs> paul and i know you're going to do a big shout out for me and to gino and james mcginn raise our gino and james see that you, you are looking out for me see that the partnership just started when you quit uh, and on that note friends i'm going to have a wee yeah is it this side it's this it's that front plate here <laughs> razor razor so from me and martin kelly and thanks peter for the accompaniment uh thanks very much much appreciated our main man stefan our main man, Oliver there, Oliver from Video Jar Productions. So, from me and Martin, that's about it, lads. We're out of here. Razor! Right